Gracious God, what a wonder you are. You are the essence of love, mercy, kindness, and gentleness. Your presence brings us joy, peace, hope, rest, and quietness. And we thank you, O Emmanuel, our God with us. Amen. Today's devotion is God Fills You. Our verse of meditation is Matthew 1, verse 23. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Sometimes it feels as if you are one person against the world, but as a child of God, that can never be true. God says, I am with you, not just that I am present, but I am on your side. So if no one else gets you today, remember, Emmanuel feels you. Humans, we are told, cannot walk on water. One would have to convert the water to a high density fluid or one with high viscosity. Or if you could run at about 108 kilometers per hour, about 30 meters per second, then you could probably run across a short body of water. Physicists tell us that we have three options for walking on water. We can increase the density of the water by adding salt, lowering the temperature, or ensuring that we displace enough water to accommodate for our body's weight. Or we could try and run fast enough to reduce friction, and that would be about running at about 30 times as fast as Usain Bolt at the peak of his career. Or we could make something called an ublex, which is a non-Newtonian fluid whose viscosity increases when pressure is applied. And we would still have to move pretty quickly to avoid being swallowed like quicksand. Sounds daunting, right? It is. Well, there was a man called Jesus. He was the Emmanuel, the God in the flesh that had been promised to mankind. He walked on water. And then he bid a disciple come, and the disciple too walked. That's the power of Emmanuel, the God with us, the God who fills us. After the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus told the disciples to get in their boat and go ahead of him to the other side. He would stay behind to formally dismiss the crowd, and then he would join them afterwards. But after the crowd had dispersed, Jesus remained there to pray. By the time he was ready to go to the disciples, their boat was a great distance away in the middle of the lake, says Mark 6 verse 47. And something else was happening. Matthew 14 verse 24 reads, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. No one had asked Jesus how he intended to join them. Maybe he was going to borrow another boat, but by the time he ended his prayer session, everyone had gone home. However, Jesus had made a promise and the body of angry water could not withstand him. Nothing can separate us or Emmanuel from us. Jesus thus set out to walk across the lake, just like that, no fanfare. The scripture says that the disciples saw a figure walking towards them and thought it was a ghost. So here they are in the middle of the lake, too far from land on any side. Then a storm is blowing and now a ghost is heading towards them. And this was just too much. Jesus must have sensed their fear because he called out above the waves, don't be afraid, it is I. Oh, those words and that voice should have calmed their troubled souls. It should have been enough to hear, it is I, do not be afraid. The trouble is, the wind was still blowing 
and the waves were still splashing onto the boat. So how is Jesus here? Then Peter spoke, If it is you, command me to walk on water. Note the word if. Peter challenged Jesus to prove that he was there. Maybe Peter was considering all that was obvious, the wind, the waves, the darkness, and of course, the fear in his soul. Jesus, who knew Peter very well, said not a word about the if, at least not yet. Come, he told Peter. And Peter, with his bold, daring, I need proof self, stepped onto water. And he walked, because Jesus' words kept him buoyant on water. It was going great. But then Peter's focus on evidence took over. And the scripture says, he saw that the waves were boisterous and he became afraid and started to sink. Lord, save me, he cried. And Jesus did. And here comes a question. Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. We often like to link Peter's faith in Jesus' question with walking on water. But could it be that Jesus was asking, why did you doubt that it is I? Why did you not believe when I said, don't be afraid, it is I? How is it that Peter forgot that this was the Emmanuel, the God with us? So him saying, it is I, I am here, was natural to his nature. Peter's initial walk was rooted in a kind of faith, if we can say that, that required a sign. And so the signs all around distracted him. But notice something else. The scripture says the wind and the waves stayed high and rough until they got back in the boat. So Jesus gave Peter a taste of what it means to walk on troubled seas with Emmanuel. To let him know and to let us know that even in the storms, Emmanuel is still Emmanuel. The God who is with us. The God who feels us. God with us or with you is not limited to God's eyes being on you. It is about God having your feelings, your fear, your limitations and your weaknesses in his purview while he works on you to get you to where he wants you to be. He called Peter to do one of the most amazing things. In fact, according to scientists, an impossible thing walk on water. And though Peter challenged the it is I, Jesus still offered him this daring feat. Peter's journey was daring, bold, but lacking. Still, Jesus said, come and walk. And when Peter started to sink, Emmanuel was there and rescued him. And then he walked with him the rest of the way to the boat while the storm still raged. That's the God who is with us. His question to Peter is a soul-searching one. Why did you doubt? Is that question being asked of you today? Why are you doubting? Emmanuel with you means that God feels you, he understands you, he hears the unspoken words, he knows you, and he wants you to be the best version of yourself. Isaiah details the essence of Emmanuel in Isaiah 41 verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And we say, Amen and Amen.